Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. She was for 12 years the president of uh, Liberia, including during the Ebola outbreak back in 2014, which claimed some 5,000 lives in the country. She was also awarded the Nobel Peace Prize back in 2011, and she joins us from Monrovia, the capital of Liberia. Thank you very much, Mrs. President, for being with us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Mrs. Johnson Sirley, for now, Africa has avoided the brunt of the COVID-19. Among, Are you among those warning that the worst is still to come? Or are you among those who feel that the continent will avoid the fate of Europe, the US, or Brazil? I believe the continent which has experienced the lowest number of cases uh, compared with the rest of the world uh, will continue uh, to be able to remain relatively in terms of cases uh, affected by the COVID-19. We've tried to wonder why And I believe one of the reasons has to do with our climate, perhaps our genes. But I also know that as a result of the Ebola experience, many of our countries have acted very quickly, very timely to put in place the protocols uh, to be able to adopt and implement the measures of containment, the lockdown that's required, all the closure that's required to be able to hold down the transmission. I know there are predictions that there might be a new wave that would uh, increase the transmission and the cases for Africa, but I'd like to believe that that will not be the case. Uh, so your country, uh, like many others, uh, has closed the borders and imposed a uh, lockdown. Uh, is this uh, the, the recipe and is this adapted uh, for Africa? Because some Africans, even some African leaders have said confinement is impossible because people need to work, need to bring food to the table. So it doesn't work. What's your take on this? And also maybe drawing from your Ebola experience. Well, you know, lockdown and containment are necessary measures when a pandemic, a pandemic has hit. I think that countries have to adopt those measures initially, but must be guided by the circumstances, being able to give for reporting, obtain reliable information on the status of the transmission of the virus and be able to act accordingly. It is necessary initially because that's the only way you can obtain the compliance to the containment measures and gain the, the confidence of the public that what you're doing is in their best interest. But ultimately, I think each country must judge based on its own country conditions. There would need to be an opening, gradually perhaps, uh, but at some point one has to begin to realize the restrictions that, pay, that are placed on the population who then face some resistance, unless there's a very good reason to continue the harsh measure, measures that I imposed initially. Right. Uh, how do you judge uh, the reaction of the Liberian uh, government uh, to this uh, pandemic? Uh, there's also uh, some controversy about uh, the fact that there's a willingness by uh, the president, George Weah, to allow religious uh, services to begin again. Uh, several uh, churches have said uh, they think it's premature. Well, I think the government has acted in accordance with the data, the information that they have received from the health authorities. 
you know, as to the extent of the transmission. I also believe they have used the experience of Ebola and how we face this deadly virus and the destruction and death that occurred because of it. And I think it's because of that, they were very timely in imposing these measures. We all have been subjected to the lockdown. The closures have been mandated for all activities, churches, mosques, entertainment centers, theaters, bars, uh, stores, schools. And so I think uh, it had to be done initially. There had been extension of the initial period of the lockdown. I think an assessment needs to be made now because we know that we also impose hardships on the population, the market women, the farmers, uh, who cannot, the small businesses are all affected. Uh, so I thought it was necessary to do it. An assessment evaluation is now called for and based upon the current circumstances, including uh, the level of transmission uh, of the virus, I think then we can see whether additional measures need to be taken. Uh, one also has to improve the communication and the financing uh, to ensure that whatever we do, not only is the public confident that we're doing, we meaning the government is doing the right thing, right. Uh, but that is something that their tolerance that cannot be stretched to its utmost limits. Right. Uh, so for the reopening of churches, uh, you trust the government is doing the right thing? My understanding is that uh, they're, they're looking at a situation uh, to be able to have the opening of, of, of churches. I don't know if it's this week yes. or maybe next week. Uh, but I hope before they, made that, they make that final decision, they will communicate with the public. They will give the public an honest, reliable reporting of the status of the pandemic right now, up to date. And on that basis, then, they can have the confidence of the public that whatever decision is made is in the interest of the population and the interest of the nation. Right. Back in 2014, uh, what was important for Liberia and the other countries affected by Ebola was the international help, especially uh, the U.S. Uh, help. Uh, what's your assessment on the reaction of the international community? Obviously, uh, the pandemic is now uh, global, so it's a different situation. But how would you assess it compared to the one you saw six years ago? A reaction of the international community to COVID-19 is much improved compared with what we faced when Ebola struck. Uh, this time, it's not only three, four African countries that are affected, uh, it's the world. And so the attention of the world uh, is, is much more diligent, much more timely, much more responsive. And so we believe that uh, in the case of Liberia, uh, the partners have responded in a timely manner, and I understand a strong manner that they're giving the technical support and the financing report. All of the partners, bilateral and multilateral partners, have already committed to certain levels of funding uh, to be able to provide safety nets for the population who are affected by containment. Uh, but let me say that the biggest challenge is yet to come just as the case of Ebola. Once the COVID-19 uh, pandemic has ended, the effect on the economy is going to be awesome. Liberia yeah. has not fully recovered from the destruction to the economy. And so we can only hope that that support that's coming now for humanitarian gestures to be able to respond, to stop the to stop the virus. Is debt cancellation uh, for be, African countries something you would want to see? Debt cancellation, I think it's been called for by the African Union headed by South African President uh, Ramaphosa, and I think he's already appointed three of our eminent uh, professionals to be able to take on 
the job of the advocacy and the assessment and evaluation and the appeal to the international community, that is going to be critical because the fiscal space for all countries will be small, particularly the poor and the fragile countries that have not been able to put to build the strong economies, national health systems that don't have the capacity uh, to be able to respond to viruses like this. Um, we are going to need the support. Of course, Africa must also, in a certain, to a certain extent, be self-reliant. Right. And I think many of our countries have adopted uh, local measures, have used local resources to be able to strengthen their response capacity to the virus. Just a very last uh, question, Mrs. President. The, uh, Just a very last question. Uh, uh, because we are running out of time. Uh, the impact yeah. on other diseases, I know you're very involved in the fight against malaria. Are you concerned that the focus on COVID-19 uh, will take away all uh, the focus from diseases like malaria and could cause even more death on the continent, in a few words, if you can? Yes, I'm very concerned that uh, the shifting to be able to respond to COVID-19 may take away from other infectious disease such as malaria. There are more deaths from malaria in our countries than from any virus that has struck. The three billion that is required to lead to an eradication of malaria is still out there waiting to be mobilized. And so we're going to call on everybody to put emphasis to promote community health workers who are the first responders for all infection diseases that are faced in our communities, particularly rural ones. Please pay attention to malaria. It kills. It needs the financial support. It needs the technical support. It needs the vaccine. It needs eradication. Please, let's Thank fight the virus, COVID-19. Let's also fight malaria. On the, those words, I want to thank you very much. That's Ellen. my word. <laughs> Ellen John, sincerely for being with us here on France 24 from Monrovia, Liberia. And thank you for watching this edition of the interview here on France 24. New technology. The latest innovation and its impact on a digital society. Tech 24. Presented by Julia Seeger and Dan and Jay Kadilka on France 24 and France24.com.